Hello, everybody. You're listening to Let's Master English, and my name is Coach Shane. All right, this is Let's Master English podcast number nine. Already the ninth episode. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. I really, really appreciate it. You taking the time, learning some English, hopefully having some fun. Once again, our fantastic listeners are uploading the transcripts to our Google Plus community. So go to Google Plus and search for Let's Master English. It's a great place with great people, and we try to keep the spam at a minimum. Transcript number eight was dictated by Ingrid from Germany. She did a great job, but we do have a few mistakes. Do you think you can help? Well, feel free. Today I want to introduce a couple of comments from iTunes, and we've got some new countries and some old countries. I'm going to start with Spain. And we have a five-star review from, oh boy, Jandri Usservera. Or maybe it's J. Andre Usservera. <clears throat> I apologize for killing your name. I think it is one of the best podcasts to improve English because of the content, the skill of the teacher, and the variety of matters. Very recommended. Thank you so much. I'm going to call you Andre, or maybe it's Andre. Uh, I sincerely apologize for the bad pronunciation. Let's jump over to Italy, and we've got a couple of reviews from Italy from Ryuzaki L92. Fantastic and rewarding. This podcast is very interesting and never humdrum. I'm used to listening to registrations, I guess the podcast, when I go to university. And it's a great way to keep the mind trained. That's fantastic. Fred, uh, Fed, Federico, Federico Robertazzi. Wow, I'm so terrible at names. I apologize. Thank you, Coach Shane. I'm getting better with my English. I really love when you explain the pronunciation of words. Please do it as frequently as you can. I shall, Federico. And... I think I did this one, Angelo, but I'm going to do it again. Thank you so much, Coach. You're doing a great job. Angelo from Italy. Well, thank you, Angelo, for leaving the comment. Let me jump over to Japan. From Hote3, very good material. This is very good English learning material in which I have been experienced. That's very, very nice. Oh, no. And then we've got comments in Japanese. And I cannot read the Japanese letters, so there's one from somebody. There's another one from Cooper8888. Thank you. There's another one from somebody. Love this podcast. And another one from somebody. Um, Toy570 podcast. That's all I can read in their, uh, their comments. But they gave me five stars, and I sincerely appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. Let's jump over to China from PJ Jiangpang. Awesome coach, awesome classes, definitely a must listen for English learners. Five stars. Thank you so much. I hope that's pronounced okay. We're going to jump to Vietnam. Thank you so much from Huang Dang Dong. You speak very clearly. Your podcasts help me a lot. I listen to them every day. Thank you so much. And also from Lee HCM. Thank you. Cảm ơn to both of you and to all the Vietnamese listeners. I sincerely appreciate it. It means a lot. Your comments and your ratings on iTunes help us very much. And I really appreciate it. Let me give you some quick statistics. Now, since the beginning, Russia has been number one. But Russia, I'm sorry, Russia, you lost. (laughs) Japan is number one, 
15,000 downloads. Japan is rocking. Once again, tomo arigato gozaimasu. Thank you very much. Number two, Russia, come on. It's Italy. Grazie. Thank you so much to my Italian listeners. I sincerely appreciate it. Number three is Russia. Spasiba. Thank you very much to my Russian listeners. Gracias. Spain is at number four. Uh, and I'm forgetting my Chinese again. Xie xie. Number five, China. Mexico. Gracias. At number six, merci. Thank you to my French listeners. They're at number seven. Thank you very much to my American friends. And I know there are probably zero native English-speaking Americans listening. It's a bunch of different people in America. Thank you very much. Kazakhstan. Can I say spasiba to my Kazakhstan listeners at number nine? And once again, kam um to my Vietnamese listeners at number 10. Rounding out the top 20, Germany at 11, Brazil, this, then we have Saudi Arabia, Korea, Ukraine, India, Canada, the UK, Malaysia, and Colombia. So that's the top 20. Thank you to everybody. And if you want me to mention you or your country, please send a message. Leave a rating and then tell me because actually it's sometimes difficult to find those ratings on iTunes. I have to click on every single country. Okay, it's time to get into the news. When you're super hungry, do you scarf down your food like a pig? Do you wolf down your burger like a starving dog? But in public, that's gross. Have no fear. A Japanese burger chain has created the Liberty Wrapper, which hides your mouth while you chow down your lunch. Instead of seeing your disgusting eating habits, fellow patrons only see a specially made wrapper that shows a clean, smiling face. What? Lots of interesting words in this one. Let's listen again. When you're super hungry, do you scarf down your food like a pig? Do you wolf down your burger like a starving dog? But in public, that's gross. Have no fear. A Japanese burger chain has created the Liberty Wrapper, which hides your mouth while you chow down your lunch. Instead of seeing your disgusting eating habits, Fellow patrons only see a specially made wrapper that shows a clean, smiling face. Ah, yes, I must say the Japanese people are very creative. They have so many interesting inventions, and this is one of Japan's interesting inventions. Did you understand the story? Well, let's go back to the first sentence. When you are super hungry, when you're super hungry, mm, super hungry, very, very hungry, you're so hungry. How hungry? You could eat a horse. You're so hungry. When you are super hungry, do you scarf down your food like a pig? Well, here's a new phrasal verb for many of you to scarf down, S-C-A-R-F, down, D-O-W-N. Scarf down is an American expression. In the UK, they say scoff down, which would be S-C-O-F-F, D-O-W-N. It's the same thing, and it means to eat something very quickly and probably very, very dirtily, in a very dirty way. So you don't care about looking good. For me, when it comes to pizza, I usually scarf it down. <laughs> yes. So when you're super hungry, do you scarf down your food like a pig? 
Yeah, well, we know pigs have the image of <coughs> of eating not in a very clean way. Do you eat like that sometimes? Maybe you do when you're super hungry. The next sentence. Do you wolf down your burger like a starving dog? Well, it's the same sentence. Do you wolf down? Here is another phrasal verb. Wolf. W-O-L-F. That's like a wild dog. That's a wolf. Uh, wolf down, of course, means to eat, to scarf down, to scoff down, to eat something very, very quickly and not very cleanly. Do you wolf down your burger? Now, B-U-R-G-E-R, -E burger, hamburger, cheeseburger. Now, make sure you pronounce the R. Do not say booger, because a booger... Ooh, that's disgusting. Boogers are those things in your nose. Do you eat that stuff in your nose? Of course not. Those are boogers. You don't want to eat boogers. You want to eat burgers. <laughs> so, do you wolf down your burger like a starving dog? So, starving, once again, means extremely hungry. You haven't eaten for days. And a dog is a dog. So we can imagine a starving dog would wolf down its food like a pig because it's super hungry. Okay? When you're super hungry, do you scarf down your food like a pig? Do you wolf down your burger like a starving dog? But in public, that's gross. Yeah, in public, in front of other people. If you eat like that, like a starving dog or like a pig, if you eat like that in public, at a restaurant, in front of other people, that's gross. G-R-O-S-S. -S. That's disgusting. That's icky. Oh, that's terrible. Have no fear. Have no fear. Don't worry. If you're worried about that, don't worry anymore. Why? A Japanese burger chain has created the Liberty Wrapper. So in Japan, a hamburger restaurant franchise, a Japanese burger chain. There's not just one restaurant, there are many restaurants with the same name. So this chain, so in America, the biggest hamburger chain is McDonald's. Next would be Burger King. I'm sure in your country, you probably have McDonald's and Burger King, but you probably also have local chains or domestic chains. Well, this is a Japanese burger chain. And they have created, they've made, they've invented the Liberty Wrapper. Liberty, L-I-B-E-R-T-Y, Liberty, freedom. Wrapper, W-R-A-P-P-E-R. -P -P -E what is a wrapper? Well, if you buy a hamburger at McDonald's, they don't just give you the food, they put the food in paper. And they close the paper and they give you the hamburger. That paper is called a wrapper. The same thing if you buy gum at the store, it comes in a little package and then you take the piece of gum out and usually there's some foil, some tin foil or aluminum foil. That is the gum wrapper. So, a Japanese burger chain has created the Liberty Wrapper. Liberty Wrapper? A wrapper that gives you freedom? Which hides your mouth while you chow down your lunch. Okay, so, this Liberty Wrapper hides your mouth. H-I-D-E-S. It covers your mouth. It hides your mouth. When? While you 
Chow down your lunch. Chow down. C-H-O-W. Down. We have another phrasal verb. So we have scarf down, scoff down, wolf down, and now chow down. And they all mean the same thing. <laughs> to be eating like a starving dog or a pig. So when you're eating your lunch and you're chowing down and it's really messy and dirty, don't worry. Feel free to eat like a pig because this restaurant will give you a Liberty wrapper and that Liberty wrapper will hide your mouth while you eat like a pig. Instead of seeing your disgusting eating habits, fellow patrons only see a specially made wrapper that shows a clean, smiling face. Do you understand? So we need to understand fellow patrons. So fellow, F-E-L-L-O-W, patrons, P-A-T-R-O-N-S. Fellow patrons, other customers, other customers at the restaurant. So you're eating like a pig, but the other customers at the restaurant only see a specially made wrapper, the Liberty wrapper, specially made. And what about this Liberty wrapper? That shows a clean, smiling face. Aha, so when you, when you eat your hamburger and you use the wrapper, it hides your face and it shows a clean, smiling face. So, fellow patrons will never see your disgusting eating habits. Of course, normally, you do not have disgusting eating habits, right? You are very proper. You're very polite. You only eat in small bites and you always use a napkin, right? <laughs> Me too. I am very clean when I eat. I'm the cleanest eater in the world. Do you believe me? <clears throat> yeah, maybe not. I eat like a pig. But only when I'm alone. But now, if I go to Japan and I go to this burger chain, I can eat like a pig in the restaurant. This is great! But there's only one problem. What about the sound? So people can see a nice, clean, smiling face, but they'll hear... And that's not good. Well, anyway, it's better than nothing. So very interesting, very funny. I like this story. And once again, the Japanese people are very creative. So we have several good words, new vocabulary, some phrasal verbs. Let's go ahead and start. Scarf down. S-C-A-R-F. Scarf down. And wolf down. W-O-L-F. Down. To scarf down, to wolf down, means to eat like a pig or to eat like a starving dog. So be honest. When do you scarf down food? What's your favorite food to wolf down? Starving, S-T-A-R-V-I-N-G, super, super hungry. Now, actually, starving is a serious word, and we all know about the children in Africa and the children, people in North Korea. We hear that they are starving. Starving is a serious issue. But even, like, for me, if I don't eat breakfast and I don't eat lunch and it's 4 o'clock in the afternoon, I could say, oh, I'm starving. In public, to talk in public, to do something in public, to eat in public, that means in front of other people, especially strangers, in front of other strangers. Gross, G-R-O-S-S, -S, disgusting. Have no fear, have no fear, get the intonation. 
have no fear, don't worry, don't worry about that. A burger chain, get that R sound, burger chain, would be a hamburger chain, a hamburger franchise, franchise, F-R-A-N-C-H-I-S-E. Liberty Rapper. So this is actually a proper noun. It's the name of an invention. Liberty means freedom. Wrapper is the paper covering on food. Liberty Wrapper. W-R-A-P-P-E-R. Hides your mouth. Hides your mouth. Covers your mouth. Chow down. To chow down is, of course, the same as to scarf down and to wolf down. Eating habits. Eating habits can have many different meanings, but in this case, I'm referring to eating in a very polite or disgusting style. And finally, fellow patrons. Other customers at the store or at the restaurant the same time you are. So when you're at the restaurant and you see other customers, when you're at the store and you see other customers, those are fellow patrons. Okay? So those are the key words. And I'm going to read the story two more times. The first time, slowly. And the second time, normal speed. And I want to remind you, I teach normal speed pronunciation and listening skills. That means linking and cancellation in my daily dictation members class. And I am happy to give you a free sample lesson. Send me an email to dailydictationmembers at gmail.com and say, Hi Shane, give me a free lesson and I'll send you a free lesson. Okay? Okay, so here we go. Listen carefully. Two times, the first time slow, the second time normal. When you're super hungry, do you scarf down your food like a pig? Do you wolf down your burger like a starving dog? But in public, that's gross. Have no fear. A Japanese burger chain has created the Liberty Wrapper, which hides your mouth while you chow down your lunch. Instead of seeing your disgusting eating habits, fellow patrons only see a specially made wrapper that shows a clean, smiling face. When you're super hungry, do you scarf down your food like a pig? Do you wolf down your burger like a starving dog? But in public, that's gross. Have no fear. A Japanese burger chain has created the Liberty Wrapper, which hides your mouth while you chow down your lunch. Instead of seeing your disgusting eating habits, fellow patrons only see a specially made wrapper that shows a clean, smiling face. It's question and answer time. I have a message from Sergei Churyotikov. Churyotikov. And he, he leaves this message. I can watch the Discovery Channel and, and understand everything. I'm very happy. He wants me to tell everybody that, including on my videos and on the Discovery Channel and other channels on YouTube, you can use the captions button. That's right, they do have a captions button which gives you the English words. They put the words up there on the screen and that will help you understand. So that's very true, Sergey. I do agree. However, Sergey, I do warn you, many times those captions make mistakes and sometimes they make huge mistakes. Sometimes I listen to my videos and I read the captions that YouTube provides 
and I laugh and laugh and laugh because they're terrible. <laughs> so Google and YouTube are doing a great job in this caption technology. And uh, yeah, give it a try. Sometimes you can use it. But just remember, Sergey, and to everyone else, don't trust those captions 100%. We have another request from Bo Yu Chen. This is Jerry. And he says, could you tell us how to spell those sounds that they use in English? You know, those sounds like, huh? Ah. Oh. <laughs> well, that's a great question, Jerry. Now, those sounds are called interjections. And actually, Jerry, there are many different ways to spell interjections. It depends on the country and even the region within the country. Now, here's another reason to visit our Google Plus community, Let's Master English. Margarita Gedlek, one of our DDM students, just like Jerry, she posted a link and this is basically a dictionary of interjections. Ah, oh, ah, uh, oops. And it has all the spellings and the meanings. So this is a very, very useful website. And you can find the link on our Let's Master English community. She posted it on November 5th, November 5th. And um, once again, it's a dictionary of interjections. And I'll read the link to you. So if you have a pencil, get ready. www.vidarholen.net. So www.vidarholen.net slash contents, C O N T E N T S, slash interjections i n t e r j e c t i o n s margarita as always thank you very much for that great link and uh please go there check out the dictionary check out the spellings and uh it should help you a lot that's a great question we also have a question for from ryoko 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 uh from japan actually has three questions on top of one another. So those five words, on top of one another. This expression is actually difficult to hear and it's almost impossible to say. Would you teach me the pronunciation of this word? Absolutely, Ryoko. The pronunciation of on top of one another is on top of one another. On top of one another. On top of one another. So let me explain. On. In America, we say on. We don't say un. We say on. O-N. On. On. On top. T-O-P. We don't say top. We say top. The next word is of. O-V. And after of is one. O-N-E. Now, there's a rule, and we learned this in DDM. And the rule is after the word of... If there's a consonant, then the V is canceled. So of one, is there a consonant? No, Shane. It's O-N-E. O is a vowel. Yes, O is a vowel. But the pronunciation is not on. It's one, which is a W, which is a consonant, which means we can cancel the V. So... On top of one another. On top of one another. Lots of connecting, lots of linking. On top of one another. 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 Yeah, so there you go. The next question. I want to know the difference between F-R-A-M-E and F-L-A-M-E. So obviously the meaning is different, F-R-A-M-E and F-L-A-M-E. It's the pronunciation, frame, 
flame. Frame, flame. So let's get rid of the F. Rain, rain, lame, lame. Now, Yoko, on my Coach Shane's ESL YouTube channel. That's www.youtube.com slash Coach Shane's ESL. Go to the search box and type R or L. And you will see I have many videos teaching the R pronunciation and the L pronunciation. Those videos are very important. So I want you to practice a little bit. And if you can, leave me an MP3, of uh, an audio recording. You can do that on YouTube. And uh, just leave a response. And I should be able to see it. And I can listen to your pronunciation. And that goes for everybody, too. And number three, I want to know the difference, uh, uh, the pronunciation difference between C-O-D-E and C-O-R-D. C-O-D-E, code, code, code. C-O-R-D, cord, cord, cord. So once again, it's the R sound. And I know in Japan and in Korea and in many other countries, the R is very difficult. Remember, when you make the R pronunciation, the R sound, the tongue touches nothing. And the tip of the tongue points to the upper part of your jaw. Do you know the alveolar ridge? A-L-B-E-O-L-A-R alveolar ridge. The tongue points to that. It's the ridge or the bump right behind your upper teeth. You have to point, you have to use some some muscles in your tongue and actually in your cheek. Er, er, er. Frame, cord. That R sound in almost every word is going to be pronounced nearly the same. Native English speakers have an easy time with the R sound, but I know it's very difficult. You need to practice. Master the R. The L sound is easy. If you put your tongue slightly, lightly between your teeth and go, oh, oh, I love you. I love you. I love the letter L. If you put your tongue between your teeth every time you say the L, not too heavy, very light, you'll have the perfect L sound. So then you need to compare the L and the R, O, R, O, R, and they're very different, very, very different. So Ryoko and so many other people practice those L and R sounds. And thank you, you guys, for your questions. It's time to move on. How you doing everybody? This is Country Shane and I'm here to bring you the facts. Most of the planets in our solar system spin counterclockwise, but Venus and Uranus rotate in different directions. Food for thought. This has been Country Shane bringing you the facts. Country Shane is reading science these days. Now, Country Shane said Uranus, and some people say Uranus. Uh, that's one of our planets. I know that you know that. It's Saturn. It's the planet after Saturn. Saturn, Uranus, or Uranus, and then, of course, uh, Neptune and Pluto. I still think that Pluto is a planet. Uh, so thank you, Country Shane, for that fact and for that great expression, food for thought, that we learned on E-Cubed. I hope everybody is watching my E-Cubed channel on YouTube. It's www.youtube.com slash daily easy English. And there we study a great expression every day. 
So thank you once again, everybody, for joining my podcast, for downloading the podcast, and please tell your friends, subscribe on iTunes, give me a good rating, and uh, hopefully I can read your comment or talk about your country in the future. Don't forget, we do have a webpage, www.letsmasterenglish.com. You can also get the transcripts to our past podcasts there. And hopefully at this point, we're, we're still working on the website. So this is right now, I'll tell everybody who's listening, this is what, November 6th, 2013. Our website is still being constructed, but hopefully... When you're listening to this podcast, you can go there and get more information about DDM, Daily Dictation Members. That is my membership class. It's a great class. If you want to improve your listening and pronunciation skills, if you want to learn many interesting things about American culture and the American way of thinking, it is the best class on the internet. I guarantee it, and I'll give you a free lesson. Send me an email, www. Oops, that's not an email address. Ow. Sorry, my email address, dailydictationmembers at gmail.com. I gotta go. Thanks for listening, everybody. Take care, everyone, and let's master English.